This podcast is presented by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, safer, healthier people. Hello, I'm Pamela Bryant. I'm a mom and a CDC worker. And just like you, I have questions about the new H1N1 flu and the H1N1 flu vaccine. With me today is Dr. Ann Shukit, a chief scientist at CDC, who will share information with us on some common questions about the new H1N1 virus. Dr. Ann, so you're a chief scientist and director for CDC's Immunization and Respiratory Diseases Center. What's with the uniform? You know, I wear the uniform because I'm part of the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps. It's a non-military uniform service. I'm a doctor, but a lot of people think I'm an airplane pilot, but I'm actually just a CDC worker like you. have been here mm-hmm. over 20 years. Okay, all right, so you, you've had a, a great career at CDC. I understand you've been very busy um, talking with many different people about H1N1. Tell us, what, what is H1N1 and how is it affecting people? The H1N1 influenza virus is new. It just emerged um, last spring in 2009. And you know, some people have heard of it as the swine flu. Uh, important to know that this doesn't have to do with eating pork or touching pigs or anything. Okay. This is a virus that's affecting a lot of people right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're working hard on it to try to keep people healthy and safe from it. Okay. Well, I have a few questions, sure, a few more sure. questions for you. And so I can't rem- remember everything. I decided to write them down. Uh, before we talk about vaccines, I'm confused along with everyone else. What are we calling this? Right, we're calling this 2009 H1N1. Um, we're trying to differentiate it from seasonal flu or what you might think of as the regular flu. Every year there's about um, 200,000 people hospitalized from seasonal flu. Um, and this year we also have this new H1N1 virus in the mix. And so we're working hard to make sure that we can protect people against seasonal flu, but also against the H1N1 virus. Okay, and so when you say seasonal flu, that's regular right, flu right. Uh, that some people get every year. That's right, and, okay. and those seasonal flu viruses um, change a little bit year to year, but not mm-hmm. so much. And, and this new H1N1 virus is so different that we don't think the general population is protected against it, mm-hmm. and we're taking extra steps to offer protection. We do a lot for seasonal flu. We offer a flu vaccine each year. This year we're making a special vaccine up, the H1N1 vaccine, that will be offered in addition to the seasonal flu. There'll probably be different um, recommendations, but I can tell you a little about them if you want. Um, The H1N1 vaccine we're um, offering for five focus priority groups right now, for pregnant women, Mm -hmm. for healthcare workers, for people who live with or care for babies under six months, because those babies can't get the vaccine themselves. We want their moms and dads and their caregivers to also get vaccinated. For children and young adults between six months of age and 24 years of age, and we want them to get vaccinated because a lot of them have been getting sick. They've been a big feature in the early disease that we've seen. And then we also recommend the vaccine for adults 25 through 64 years of age um, who have underlying chronic conditions like diabetes and asthma, chronic heart disease or chronic lung disease, because those people have had worse complications from the influenza. They've had more hospitalizations and, and some have died. So how many doses would each person need to get? You know, with the usual seasonal flu vaccine or or regular flu vaccine, most people just need one dose. But with the H1N1 vaccine, we think most people are gonna need two doses. So for starters, we're expecting everybody to be, get one dose uh, and then three weeks later, come back for a second dose. And uh, should people expect to uh, experience any, any side effects from having received two doses, one for a regular flu and that first dose for H1N1 on the same day? Or, you know, we're you know? expecting that it's just fine to get both a seasonal flu vaccine and an H1N1 vaccine at the same visit. We're mm-hmm. just expecting a shot in each arm, not, oh, not uh, okay. that that would be the way to go. Okay. Um, f- so that that's the plan. Now, we also think the seasonal flu vaccine is gonna be available sooner than the H1N1 vaccine. So you don't have to wait. We think it's a good idea to get that seasonal flu vaccine as soon as it's available near you. Um, And then when the H1N1 vaccine becomes available, take advantage of that. Okay, well, I have two children. Uh Mentioned that I'm a mom. 
and they both are vaccinated uh, each year against the regular flu. Great. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, we're considering the H1N1 flu vaccine as well. It's great that your kids are getting the seasonal flu vaccine every year, and we think that's terrific. And we do think getting the H1N1 vaccine will be important for them too. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I know there's a, a nasal spray for the regular flu vaccine. Will this same nasal spray be available for H1N1? Well, there are actually different ways of fighting off influenza. The shot is a killed virus, and um, the nasal spray is a weakened virus. But the really important thing is that neither the nasal spray nor the shot can give you flu. They can protect you against flu. A lot of people think that the flu vaccine gives you flu. It can't. So you've talked about vaccines and what's in them, but we're also hearing words like adjuvants. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday, someone asked me about squalene. What, what are those? Squalene is an adjuvant. Adjuvants mm -hmm. are put into vaccines to increase the immune system. We're not actually expecting to use adjuvants for the H1N1 influenza vaccines that we're making. We have bought adjuvant to have on the shelf. It's really an emergency provision or a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. If this virus mutates and becomes much, much different and more severe, we might need to add adjuvants in order to have an immune response that's effective, but for the time being, we really aren't expecting to use them. We're expecting to be using vaccines that are produced exactly the same as the seasonal influenza vaccines are, and they don't have adjuvants here in the United States. Well, with that in mind, is the new vaccine safe? It's really important to me as a doctor and a public health expert that our vaccine safety system is really strong. I can tell you what we're doing. Um, we have a system that's out there for vaccines in general, but we're strengthening it for this H1N1 vaccine system. We want to make sure that if there are any problems associated with this vaccine, we find them quickly and we do something about them. And where can we get the vaccine? You know, in every state and city, it might be just a little bit different. And so the way that this vaccine uh, distribution is going to work is that the public health departments in the state or the large city areas will be directing the program. Um, we're expecting there to be school clinics where school aged children may be able to get the vaccine right at school after you know their parents sign a permission slip for that. We're also expecting the vaccine to be available in some doctor's offices and in some pharmacies and workplaces as well as in some community center kinds of clinics. But the specifics are going to depend on where you live. So we think it's going to be important for public health um, and the private health system to be in close communication and for everybody out there to stay tuned. You mentioned schools and school settings for vaccinations. Will this be required for entry into school or for kids to be able to stay in school? No, not at all. What we're offering is a voluntary vaccination program where we want to make sure people have um, access to vaccine and that vaccine's available for them, but we don't want this to be a mandatory program. So kids won't be kept out of school if they don't get the vaccine. We want parents to have good information so they can decide about the vaccine, and we want to make sure it's, it's easy for them to get it for their kids. And again, these vaccines are being thoroughly tested. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. On different populations or different types of people. You know, there are a number of studies going on. They're being done around the country in a number of cities. There's some studies in other countries as well. Um, and they're being tested on a diverse group of people, children and adults, pregnant women, um, men and women. So we'll really get a lot of information from those. But it's really important for people to know that we've got a huge experience with the seasonal influenza vaccine. Every year about 100 million people in the U.S. get that and we look at what happens with it. So I know that many people wonder, you know, how bad is this flu and what could the vaccine do to me? Based on what I know today, I'm pretty concerned about this virus and what the, what the influenza virus itself can do and I'm feeling very comfortable with the safety information, but knowing that we're going to keep looking and that it's important that we do that. Thank you, Dr. Ann, for joining me today and answering many of the questions and concerns that people are having about the H1N1 flu and the H1N1 flu vaccine. It's been my pleasure, Pam, and it's great to get to meet you. Yes, thank you. I hope this conversation has been helpful. And now that Dr. Ann knows me, I better make sure that I get my kids vaccinated so that they won't miss school and that I won't miss work. Thanks for watching.
For the most accurate health information, visit www.cdc.gov or call 1-800-CDC-INFO 24-7.